Okay, so my name is Joe Scarf and I work for a company called Twine. We're a network that brings creative people together. And I'm very lucky to have <laughs> Tiffany Gaines with me today, and uh, AKA Blasia, um, Senior Marketing Director of Monster Squad, um, CFO and board member for Curtis Young, uh, Freeway Rick Ross, Christine Storm, and she's also um, CEO of LRT Entertainment, owner and founder of Shared Success Music Group, as well as um, Flazia Entertainment LLC. It's really wonderful to have you on, um, and I'm sure the Twine community will really benefit from your expertise. I just yes, wanted to... Absolutely. Fantastic, thank you, yeah. I just wanted to yeah. start by asking you if you had three tips for an emerging artist, bedroom artist, mm -hmm. what would they be? Because I, I get people every day asking me, you know, what can I do to get myself from 20 followers, you know, who like my music up to, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. What's, what are the th key steps to get them on the road to that success? Well, I think number one is always going to be perspective. Uh, a lot of the artists, especially the ones that work with me, even the ones that are not, you know, that are outside of my platform, they have the, the wrong perspective. They're, the industry paints this picture of the mainstream world, so everything is very fast-paced. Fast Does that make sense? Um, yeah. You know, a lot of the fame, the riches, the women, uh, the money, the lavish lifestyles, that's not typical in an independent world. Uh, success is right. very slow-paced. Growth yeah. is very slow. So number one is the perspective needs to be more realistic. And that way when you focus more right. on the, the growth potential rather than, okay, I want to go platinum or I want to become this <laughs> multi-million dollar company, you know, in one year, two years, even three years, you have to be more right. realistic in the expectation uh, or the perspective. I'm sorry. Number two is the expectation. The expectation meaning, again, let's talk about the growth. So if you make attainable goals, I always tell my artists, make sure that you set goals that you can actually meet. So instead of saying, I want to make a million dollars at the end of the year, why don't you try to set a goal to where you can try to figure out how you can make a thousand dollars per month? Right? Right. And then this is, this is good for any industry. That's why I love uh, about these seminars because it's not just about the independent artists. It's not just about, uh, you know, it's the producers, it's the designers, it's the, the DJs, and it's just the small business owner in general. So if you can apply right. those two, perspective and expectations, to your goals and actually meet them, then you can actually, look, you can start looking back and seeing progress and seeing real results. Makes sense? Yeah, that's number, brilliant. No, and number yeah. three is independent. Um, right. The goal, I'm the host of, a comp of, of an event or of a movement called the Underground Over Mainstream Movement. Um, the LRT Music Video Awards, obviously I'm the CEO of a company called LRT. We're pushing this once a year event that celebrates the independent entrepreneur. Right. So it kind of opens up the, the possibilities or the opportunities that if you attend something like this, you know, some people spend hundreds of dollars just to go to the BET Awards, to the Grammy Awards, to the MTV Awards, and they don't know anybody. They never even have the potential of working with these mainstreams, these top executives of the business, right? But right. if I create this space to where the group of, or the, the type of people that are around in this particular environment would be someone you can actually work with, that might be able to add to your situation on a positive note, then it kind of, it opens up the opportunity, but then we're literally mirroring the award shows of the BET Awards and the Grammy Awards. So when people come and they submit their videos, they're the ones that's being nominated. They're the ones that's actually winning these awards. And they're the ones that are actually, you know, being able to rub shoulders with veterans of the business that support this movement. So number three is independence. You have to get away from that brainwashing of, I want to become mainstream, because there's only 
so many people that are allowed to do that. Even when you look in the radio world, you know, right. there's a very small space out of a 12 month calendar of when an independent uh, in, when an independent artist can actually break a single and sometimes when you don't know that you're wasting all this money and you're competing against the multi you know million dollar uh, companies and you're competing against the relationships and it's not realistic so again if you can tone it down and focus on how you can become a successful independent entrepreneur then that's how you can actually start seeing progress and real results. So the three things, right? Okay. Perspective, uh, expectation, and independence. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. So with that in mind, are you saying that artists shouldn't pursue record labels and actually should set themselves up as their own labels, be their own business people? Or do you still think labels have a place for emerging artists? The world that we're in now, 2016, independent mm. labels actually are, you know, I'm an independent guru. And right. that's always going to be what I push. Uh, a major label is going to look out for the best interest, interest of the company, yeah. of the label, of the executives, not the artists. The artists are the pawns. The artists are, you know, I'm going to give you the seven to ten year contract it's going to have a term to where you have to recoup everything that this company has invested in you. So from your brand to your name, to your likeness, to just your overall, that's why they call it selling your soul. Right. It doesn't matter whether you're tired. It doesn't matter whether you're, so here we go. We, this major label builds this artist. They paint this dream and they actually make this dream come true. Hmm. But in seven to 10 years, your this brand that you've created when it's time to either renew the contract or to end the contract, what they leave you with is that they say, look, you can either and never use anything that we've created, meaning the songs that you blew up on, the, the name that we branded, the likeness, everything just act as if it never happened. But then if you do choose to leave, don't forget that you have to pay us back for everything that we've invested in you, which is, again, the recoup. Right. A lot of artists are like, you know, they, they're focusing on these advances. Oh, they're going to advance me $100,000 uh, up to a million dollars, which is very unrealistic right now to tell you, you know, um, I don't know mm. if you know about the advancements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you rarely see that anymore. But let's just right. say they did. A lot of artists think, great. So now I'm going to have all this money. I, I won't have to worry about, um, you know, feeding the family. My, my, maybe they have kids. Maybe they're in a bad situation financially. So, of course, naturally, you're going to want to get out of that ASAP. So it looks good. But what they're not seeing is seven, ten, seven to ten years down the line, you literally sold your soul. And they own you. There is no right. escape from that. So majors, do I... Do I want or do I encourage an independent artist to mm. shop their talent to a major? Absolutely not. Right. That is probably the worst thing that they can do. Interesting. Okay. So in you think would you say then if someone came to you saying, you know, I've had an offer from from a label, uh, okay. yeah, a, a major label, and they're at that point where their career, their career is gathering steam. W would you tell them to just carry on, or would you say that the leverage they can get from the label might be worth, you know, the the payback they get eventually? You know, a lot of artists, especially this has happened all the time, many times. Artists come to me, including Curtis. Curtis Young, yeah. there's major labels offering him deals left and right. Right. Uh, with him, it's a little different because he wants to maintain this independent role because of his father being Dr. Dre. Um, it's like a bittersweet sweet situation where everything he does, people think that it's Dre helping him. Yeah, right, of okay. course. So let's backtrack to the independent artist. If they're starting to make noise, and obviously an A&R rep uh, from a major notice, takes notice of them and they come up to them and say, look, I would like to offer you an opportunity. Let's walk you into this major label and see what we can do. 
I'm always going to go back to the same question. What are they offering you? Right. A lot of times the artists don't, they don't really look into that contract. So they see seven to 10 years, they see $100,000 advance. They see that you don't have to worry about cars, houses, nothing. Everything is completely paid for. But they're not looking into the future. They're not even looking into the fact that they're going to be dipped on so many times. But by the time they actually make some money and see it, they're exhausted. It's not worth it. Radio right. interviews, they fill your entire schedule up. When I mean entire schedule, it literally you might have an hour to sleep if that. You're constantly on the move, right? Wow. wow. And imagine you don't have time to do anything. You, you, you tend to lose focus on what's important, which is your family, yeah. your friends, the little small things that, that the quality of life allows you to have, which is time. Yeah. You don't have that anymore. Everything is completely robbed of you. Right. Why? Because these executives are being compensated by way of your efforts. And God forbid you slack off, something happens to you, now you're not helping pay these bills. So right. then the threat, you know, then the threats come in. And we don't want to talk about those threats. I don't want to I don't want to turn this call into something where I'm scaring independent no, no. artists. <laughs> no, I think I, I think it's really important to get your insight because, as you said, there's a lot of glamorizing that goes on about being signed to major labels and getting to this point where you are this, you know, in inverted commas, famous artist. And mm -hmm. I think it's important to hear the other side of that because there have been people like Ed O'Brien from Radiohead who said that you know, artist contracts are so weighted in favor of the record companies that it's just so hugely unfair. And you've just highlighted that. But absolutely, I, I think the part of that that I think is maybe even more dangerous is that labels and uh, just media in general have made artists feel like success is something that can be got overnight or without that much effort. And something that uh, well, I was recently interviewing Cocaine that he highlighted mm -hmm. was that it's all about perseverance. For him, the reason that he's had his success is because he was he has been on so many tracks and on social media, he's hammering it every single day. And right. I just wanted to get your, your perspective on perseverance and what artists need in terms of integrity as people to actually make their career happen. Well, when it comes to preservance, if you don't have the consistency, if you don't have the drive and the passion, this is a cutthroat industry. Right. It's filled with snakes. Yeah. Everyone is trying to hustle. Someone to, you know, for the dollar, for the additional dollar. Yeah. You can't trust anybody. With that being said, if you lack the effort to keep going after being told no so many times, after being you know, uh, compared to those that are just even a step above you. Hmm. If that's your main focus, then you might as well quit today because this industry is set up for you to fail. Right. That's just what it is. It's set up for you to fail because you're, you're competing with the mainstreams and you don't have that mainstream money. Right. You're not going to see overnight success unless you get with the multi-million dollar um, companies and the relationships. You know what's funny? A lot mm -hmm. of these major, especially radio, an artist can come to me and ask for radio and you have this number in your head, a hundred grand or more. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's relationships. They do what's called, they pad everything. So if I have the connect to a radio station um, distributor, and let's just say I know it's a thousand dollars for a mix show, uh, uh, you know, a group of mix shows to put one particular single on, and maybe fifteen hundred dollars to get the song on media base and BDS and terrestrial radio, just to get it started to start a radio story. Hmm. If I then give my connect to I don't know a uh, let's just say an independent label owner. And they pad that and they turn that into 5,000. And then all of a sudden they spread it out and it turns into this affiliate program. And now the number turns into 10,000 and 50,000. 
even when it comes to submitting your videos to MTV, BET, VH1, it's $20. Wow. People don't know this, but it's all <laughs> over the, it's literally all over the internet. $1,500 is the average number to submit your video. And they say, you know, it's just submission, but, uh, you know, placement is not guaranteed. Mm. But they dip so many times, broker to broker to broker to agent to broker, that you never really know what's what right. when it comes to, you know, it's very discouraging. So that's why artists that come to me, they're always looking at me like, okay, are you a scam artist? Are you going to hustle me? Are you, you know what I'm saying? So this mm. overnight success ideal or, or ideology, mm. they need to get rid of it. <laughs> because nothing is overnight. You, and, and a lot of artists don't look at themselves as businesses. Mm. They are a business and they are a brand. So let's just say I have this product. Let's just say I had Apple, right? Mm. And now, no one knows about Apple. But I right. start this, I, I get this company, I don't know, maybe I just go rent some building. So now right. I have this building, but I have the Apple product but I don't have a marketing strategy. I don't have a business plan. I don't have anything other than the fact that this product is here and I know it can go somewhere if I just get it to the right person, to the right relationships, right? And build my blueprint. Now let's compare that to right. an artist. An artist has the perfect product in their mind. They have this great mixed and mastered project. Uh, they have the brand. They know what they want to look like. They know how they want to sound. They can picture themselves mainstream. Mm. you're not going to go open up this building and then just sit there and wait for people to come and, and wow. take notice that you have Apple products in your store or in your, you know, your building. You have to have some sort of strategy blueprint. Artists are missing that. They don't know what a business plan is. They don't know the back end of the business. Half of them don't know what sound exchange, what sound scan, BDS, you know, your performance royalty organizations, half of them don't even know what that is and they'll blame, they'll put it on the manager. They'll say, oh, well, I don't have a manager. Or my manager needs to know that. Yeah. Now, how can you expect a company to blow up? You don't even have a register. You don't even have uh, furniture, right? That's all a process of creating your structured business. Artists are missing that. If I ask the question of, okay, what's your mission statement? Who are you? How do I know? How do I separate you from every rapper out there? Because there's a dime a dozen. If they can't answer that question, then they need to start from scratch. Right. Artists are missing that. They forget that they are a business. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, on, on that front, how do artists engage with their fans to get ahead of their competitors because I quite often get artists saying to me that you know they set up an account and obviously one problem is that they expect that they can just set it up and people will come obviously that doesn't happen but right. how can they engage with their fans and take it to another level so that those fans which are obviously very valuable stick around and then tell their friends and then it begins to go viral Okay, so let's go back to the business plan. Mm -hmm. In the business plan, most business plans have marketing strategies. They study the competitors, correct? Yes. Okay, same thing. They need to compare themselves as a business. So who are my competitors? If I'm a rap artist, I need to see who falls into the same genre. I need to understand what type of technology I have that is popularly used amongst all of these rappers. For example, let's just say social media. You need to understand what's the difference between Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Some people are posting so many pictures, posting all the time on Facebook, and that, that just in itself is, in comparison to Twitter, is not the way to go. You are, you're going to be considered a spam, um, a spammer, if you do that on Facebook. Now, Twitter is more related to how much you can post. The more you post, it can be irrelevant. The more you post, it actually increases the engagement of the account and allows the potential followers of your followers to see your tweets. Now, Instagram is about pictures. It's not so much about words. It's not so much about 
uh, you know, links to websites. So it's about understanding what to link, what to post, how to post. This all comes from research. Artists don't do this. They just think, oh, you know what, I'll just pay some random company to handle it all. Now, what are we going to come back to uh, as far as the issue? Again, it's the money. I don't have the money to keep up this monthly overhead for this company to run my social media. Right? right? So it's important to study first. Artists want to drop music yesterday. I finished my product. I'm super excited. I can't wait to drop it. The world's going to hear it, and I'm going to blow up. <laughs> Again, that's not realistic. No. You can't just release your product, and you don't have the slightest idea of how you're going to even run your your marketing campaigns, and you don't even have the slightest idea of how your technology even works to get the engagement started and to be able to utilize the, those platforms, um, you know, to benefit you as best as possible, as, your brand as best as possible. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I was just, I was just thinking about something, I remember um, um, the artist Moby saying, major labels thought they were more important than artists, and they never were, and I was just thinking about <laughs> The, how interesting it is that because myself I'm I have quite a lot of experience as a music producer I've done uh, music as a sound engineering as well and mm -hmm. I, I've always come at it from someone who uh, is better at the creative skills but the business side you know I, it's something that I, I've had to face up to and, and and learn but it's been more of a struggle than the music side and I feel like for a lot of artists this is a case now because you've got to be a businessman and a musician and for a lot of artists I think number one they feel like there isn't enough time in the day to do both because if you want to do your music at a high level that's got to be such a big part of your life and the the other part is that it's it often the business side doesn't come naturally to people who are very artistic um, mm -hmm. how, how can they overcome that? And what can they do to kind of supercharge their business abilities to make sure they can compete? When an artist first comes to me, uh, many times they type with one finger. And what I mean <laughs> by that, and I that literally, okay? And I've right. structured programs to where I can work with those particular artists. And I'm saying that to say this, you have to crawl before you walk or even consider running. When you want to go into some business, it doesn't matter what industry it is, what do you have to do? You have to get certified, right? Or you have to go to yeah. school for it, or you have to gain yeah. some sort of experience. Those are the three things that are going to get you further in your career. So it's the yeah. same thing when it comes to an artist who comes to me and says, look, I'm just, I'm just trying to be an artist, and right. I would rather someone else handle the business side. What they're doing is they're lim limiting themselves. You have to give yourself time to learn right. what you're going to have expect others to do for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so you have to create that balance. You have to set aside the time. I think that's why it's so important that your job, what you consider your job, has to be a purpose, right. not a hobby. A lot of artists come in and some, they hear all the time that, People say, wow, you know, you, you sing really well. You should be a singer or you rap really well. Maybe you should be a rapper or whatever it may be, a designer, you know. Hmm. And so all of a sudden they say, well, yeah, let me try that out and see if it works. But then what do they have to look, what do they have to compare to? Again, the mainstreams, not realistic, right? They forget right. that you, these mainstreams had to do something. They had to go to school for it. Uh, even audio engineers, you have to get certified. Some of them even had to go to school for three to four years. You get your associates. Some of them get go as far as bachelor's degrees. Um, with that being said, you have to, if this is truly a purpose of yours, not focus so much on the fact that I have to give away two years or three years or four years of my time to the business, and then I can focus on being an artist. Right. Stop worrying about the time and just do it. Because at some point, once you get through it, you're going to be certified. You're going to know the back end of the business. And then when you do finally get someone to be able to run, help run your business, at least you now know what to look for as far as qualifications, um, you know, requirements. Okay, this person is not up to par. 
versus going through so many different trial and error issues and going, this one didn't work, this one did. You know, mm -hmm. if time is really important, uh, which it should be the most important thing out of this whole project, out of this whole process, mm -hmm. the focus needs to get off of the fact that you want other people to worry about this portion of the business and you only want to focus on this part. You have to know the business. You have right. to. <laughs> right. And yeah. No and excuse. So, At your right. own pace. And, and, the, and the only way you can get there, right, is either, as you said, through being certified through formal education or mm -hmm. just learn, just learning from mistakes and just jumping straight in there and, and trial and error, right? Right. And if you're not a book person or you're not a school person, some people you know, get it, get an internship. Yeah. somewhere you know gain the experience because there's just the, the it's either you're going to become a studious person or you're going to become that person of experience meaning you physically get out there and do the work whatever it is that's easier for you only you know what that is but you yeah. have to commit to doing something outside of your comfort zone you're not just an artist an artist the artists nowadays you know that we're on back in the days i'm not going to name names but right. The artists that we may know their names, but now they, they're they not as popular as they used to. Several mm -hmm. of them have came to me and said, how do I get my royalties? And I'm <laughs> like, you don't know? You know, what? why did you not, why was that not something that was interesting? I mean, that was of interest to you to say, okay, if this company or this department goes away or this person goes away, how do I get my money after this term is up? Because I don't plan on being with this company forever. Yeah. Right? Right. Well, knowledge. You have to get the knowledge from somewhere. So that's another thing that I teach. Oh, so yeah, Again. Fascinating. I, I wanted to ask you in terms of collaboration, because that's a big part of what Twine's all about. Mm -hmm. Quite often, when I'm giving advice to artists who are, are trying to promote themselves, I often say, why don't you try collaborating with this guy? Because not only do you get to learn, you know, to develop your craft from working with them and, and, and learning some tips of the trade from them, but also you get to share their fan base and then their fan base gets to hear about you. And if they're interested in you, then that will help you grow. Do you think collaboration is something that can help artists develop? And what do you think are the best ways to go about that? Okay. <laughs> this is a very common <laughs> question and I'm known to answer the opposite way of what, what most would think. I think collaborations right. are a waste of time. Oh, right. Okay. I do. It's like, why do you want to associate yourself with your competitor? Now, don't get me wrong. You can learn from them. Yes. But it's for the simple fact, okay, let's just compare an artist who happens to go sign with another artist. Right. What, what's inevitable in that situation? The artist who is signing the artist below them is going to naturally want to push themselves more. Right. right? Yeah. I, I, can, I don't want to drop names. But it is very common that you hear about, oh, this artist just signed with this artist. And then you never really hear what happens with that artist that signed with the artist. It's because the, you're always worried about self. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're a snoop and you've been in this business for years, at some point you're okay with passing the torch. You, do, you don't mind bringing on independent artists because at the end of the day, your name still stands alone. It can stand on its own, right? right? But if you're still trying to climb up that ladder, you really don't want that other artist to shine as much or more than you. Then all of a sudden you start throwing shade on that artist and they're looking at you like, I thought we were gonna drop the album. Yeah, we're gonna do that later. I have my project that we're gonna focus on right now. <laughs> and so what, you're stuck in this contract. Okay, so now, that's that's that situation but let's look at a collaboration let's just say uh Nicki minaj right or kendrick lamar you have an opportunity to get a song with them a featured you know a feature from them let's just say you spent a right. hundred grand let's even be more unrealistic and make take that number down and say you only spent 50 grand for a feature from either one right. of those two yeah 
Are they going to push you? Are they taking you on tour? Are they putting you on the radio with them? If they're not, you just spent 50 grand to put your song on a platform. And what is the main issue again? Who's hearing it? Why would you spend 50 grand to put a song on a platform and hope and pray when you know that when you release a song, no one hears it anyways, or the only your immediate circle hears it. But you want to put something where it, you think it holds relevance and then you sit and scratch your head and wonder, how come, no, why am I not blowing up? Like, what's going on? You just have this false expectation that if I get a feature with Kendrick Lamar or Nicki Minaj, all of a sudden I'm about to blow up. No, you're not. That 50 grand could have been utilized and, and it could have been placed on uh, into a more beneficial platform. For example, you could have got a publicist who could have put you in a completely different light. You could have gotten a marketing agency that markets you for an entire six months to a year with 50 grand, right? right. So now you can put several projects into the limelight instead of having this one song with a feature and you're back to square one. How am I going to get people to hear this? Right. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a really interesting perspective because there's obviously artists who would be direct competitors. What would you say about collaborating with artists who are in different circles, different spheres? So I'm thinking, for example, Kanye West working with Bon Iver. I mean, in that circumstance, they're completely different markets, completely different audiences. And if anything, both of them benefited from that, you know, quite significantly. And it wasn't a case of people thinking that they're on the same ladder and, and casting shade on each other, but it's more about bringing audiences who wouldn't normally be aware of hip hop, who wouldn't normally be aware of the you know um, alternative singer songwriter world, and then smashing those two worlds together. Do you not think that could be uh, yes. a useful thing to do? I do. Now, right. if you're talking on a mainstream level, that's different. That's completely different because now both of them can have. They both have a name that stands on their own, on its own. Right. That's completely different. Now I have, let's just say, let's just say I'm an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur. I have connections. Uh, I'm an international hotel broker with the National Hotels Association. Now, if you become a friend with me, you know, or an associate or an affiliate, you now have the connect through me. I just increased your worth because now you have contacts to over 700,000 hotels worldwide through me. Right. Just by a simple affiliation to me right yeah. so now you gain my connection and whatever else you have I now have the connection to the UK through you so collaboration yes I believe they work when it comes to uh, the on, in a weighted situation where you have a certain status I have a certain status and we combine them together yes but if it's an independent versus a mainstream no I think that you need to stay in your own realm and collaborate with independent artists who are growing at the same pace. If not, a little bit more is good, because then you can learn from each other, and you can, um, you, you know, you can uh, see what works, what doesn't, and then you can grow. Uh, so I think I. That's interesting. Yeah, I think I miss um, with I that question. I didn't quite put it in the right way because I was, I was referring really to emerging artists collaborating with other emerging artists so that they can benefit from those collaborations. I, I, th I do think it's a very interesting world, the mainstream artists, you know, collaborating with emerging artists. And I definitely agree that there's a bit of kind of uh, like dream searching there that doesn't actually materialize. Like you said, you could spend 50 grand, but actually right. it might not, it, it, you, you may as well just, you know, throw it in the fire if actually they don't promote you, they don't do anything for you because it's just nothing. Right. But exactly. I do I do feel now with the internet that it's possible for, for example, recently, um, there was a guy I was chatting to who he used Twine to collaborate with a rapper in Tanzania uh, who r raps uh -huh. in Swahili. And it got him access to a completely different market that he didn't right. even know existed. And he's he's an emerging artist. He's he's pro, but he's still building his studio, still building his craft. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Yes, that yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and do you think that's going to be the way now? It's going to increasingly go now that the power is being shifted to the artist and not to the labels. Absolutely. Right. We are okay. definitely in a world of of 
I mean, come on, look where technology is going. We can now have our music right alongside mainstreams. Yeah. There's no way 20 years ago I would think that this would be possible. Right. So can you, the fact that I can reach out to somebody in Japan, China, the UK, mm -hmm. in a matter of seconds via Facebook, I can press a call button and actually reach them. I can send a message and they'll hit, it'll hit their phone. Yeah, you just, right. you definitely increased the opportunity potential of, of expanding your reach. So yes. Okay, that's I interesting. Actually, okay, yeah, I'd like to put a bit of an interesting slant on that because normally when I get into discussions on this topic, it's kind of on that particular area, I just leave it. But I feel like with you, it'd be interesting to delve a bit more into that, uh, if that's okay. I'd just like mm -hmm. to um, ask you about, obviously for for everyone, you know, we only have limited attention spans, right? So there's only so many songs we can fit in our heads. There's only, there's only so much information we can remember. And mm -hmm. back in the day in shops, there was the top 40, the amount of records you could fit on a shelf. Now there's billions, trillions of tracks, but <laughs> the audiences still only have a, you know, a very small amount of memory space for artists and tracks. So, right. Do you think that still means actually independents don't have a voice because fundamentally still people want to have their favorites and they want to have ease of access to mm -hmm. stuff that is popular? I think that it's a needle in a haystack situation now. Right. I always tell the artists, you know, when you come to me, you automatically have the largest distribution deal that exists when it comes to digital, the digital world. You know, we distribute through InGroups. Right. You get over 600 retailers, uh, you know, versus TuneCore and CD Baby is a little, I think it's 85 to 100. But what that tells you is that, okay, great, you're going to be in more retailers, but how do people know that you're there? Right. So, yeah, it is a, it is a difficult situation, which back, again, makes me go back to the fact that you need to focus on ways to generate income. Most of the time, the issue is always how do you create an overhead that you know that will consistently come in. So that's that's something I teach. Mm. Um, you know, we have strategies that an independent artist can earn two fifty to five hundred dollars a month, guaranteed. And yeah. this is just it's one of the strategies that I teach. Now, well, when it grows, what is two fifty to five hundred a month going to eventually turn into? Ten grand, twenty grand, thirty, fifty grand, right? It's better right. than nothing. Now, you just have to find how do you separate yourself from the plethora of artists or entrepreneurs. We're not, let's just not focus on artists. How do you separate yourself from that? Well, it's always going to be, money is always going to be the factor. Always. Mm -hmm. If you have more money, you have more opportunities. If you have more opportunities, you have more relationships that you can build. Right. Okay. So... Yeah, do they have a voice? No, there's still that needle in the haystack covered up. The dreams are buried. Now, how are they going to get out? How are they going to get out of that situation? Mm -hmm. They need to find opportunities, such as my own. I'm not saying that my opportunity is the only one that exists where you can earn guaranteed income. No, right. But you need to find something that's similar that can help increase your chances of standing out amongst the rest. Right, okay. And with that in mind, I want to talk a bit about um, being authentic and having originality. Mm -hmm. Something I spoke about last week when I was uh, in interviewing some artists was, I mentioned that uh, on uh, UK television years ago, there was this music producer called Square Pusher, and he said that music always acts on two extremes. You either have the cheesiest music you can imagine on one end and on the other end mm. you have music music that sounds like a monkey's picked up a guitar and thrown it across the room <laughs> and everyone is somewhere in the middle between those two extremes and everyone's trying to get more towards the monkey side without annoying too many people <laughs> and i i just i just wanted to just ask you about originality i mean do you think that originality is overrated if 
it doesn't actually build you an audience that's dedicated enough because you're moving through, you're combining too many genres and your music's too chaotic. You know, with over my, I have over 3,000 artists, okay? They're yeah. constantly coming at me with Tiffany, should I be, should I flow with the trend and just keep my sound the same as what's popular? Or yeah. should I be more original and try to stand out? My answer to them is always, do you want to have timeless music? Where in 20, 30, 50 years, people are still listening to your music and they still remember there was something about you that stood out? Mm. Or do you want to be that trendy individual where, okay, you sound just like everyone else. I can hear you on the radio. So I'm going to like you for the time being until that next hit comes out. Which would you right. rather be? Would you rather be that short term, oh, hey, one hit wonder? Remember when Wu Tang came out? Everybody was like, "What the hell? Is, what? What is Wu Tang?" You know, they yeah. were so diverse and so crazy and so out of this world that you either hated him, hated them, or you loved them. Right. But I'm in 2016 talking about Wu Tang. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question? Originality is going to set in. It's always going to set in into your into your mental. Right. Now, if your goal is to reach the masses, the mil the millions of people going mainstream, then again, we're going to go back to the whole issue of, well, where's your multi-million dollars that you're getting ready to spend? But if right. we look at purpose, which is what I wanted to focus on in the beginning, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter who listens to it. You're going to start gaining fans naturally, whether it's every time you release something, you know that 50 people are going to buy it, 1,000 mm -hmm. people are going to buy it, uh, you know, 50,000 people are going to stream it. At least you know that now your grant, your brand is growing. So you have to make that decision, or originality or trend. But I always say, look, why go with the short term? I want you talking about me in 2052. Right. Yeah, I think that's, it's interesting because I think that also applies not just to the music, but also to the imagery because, mm -hmm. You know, there are, there are countless examples of, you know, really talented graphic designers who haven't got the credit they deserve for actually building the brand image around an artist by providing them with incredible visuals. Right. Do, you, do you think that it's a worthwhile investment for emerging artists to pay for a freelance professional graphic designer to create content for them? Yes. Content right. is everything. You have to have content. What's making you stand out right. amongst the rest? When I see a brand that I know and it does not have the words associated with it, do you know what Coca-Cola's logo looks like? Of course, yeah. <laughs> right? You know what Pepsi looks like? You know what uh, the yeah. Apple looks like? Okay. Right. I mean, they've. it's very, very important to associate that logo, that brand with the individual. You have to right. stand out somehow, some way. Right. It's important. So if, if you don't if you don't invest in that, then actually you're not investing in okay, making yourself um, a recognizable company or brand that people are going to invest themselves into. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you don't care about your brand, why should I? Right. You're yeah. Just, you're just you're just you're fitting in. What I need somebody who's going to stand out. Yeah, that's a really good point. I say this very, uh, often to artists about social media, that when they say, oh, I put up a post a few days ago and I haven't had any responses to it. And I go, well, you know, w would you care about that post? And if they say no, I go, well, then how, why would you expect anyone else to care about that post? Like, <laughs> if you're not thinking right. about how the per people who are engaging with your work are thinking about it, then right. you're just stabbing in the dark. You're just making stuff up. And... You know, there's no, I mean, you might get a business that's successful out of that, but the chances are incredibly unli unlikely, right? It's like the whole monkeys, if you give them enough time, they can write Shakespeare. Yeah, but, I mean, that takes an <laughs> enormous amount of time, right? We haven't put right. lives for short. We, have, we haven't got time. You need expertise. You need guidance. And you need to understand where the business, yeah, the business yeah. skills have you are. Ever, have you ever hmm. had a conversation with somebody and they're just all over the place? They, yeah. they didn't have any structure, but they, 
they're using all these big words and and you're just like what did you just talk about like i thought we were talking about this and now you're over here and there's it never recaps back or it never reverts back to where you were started in initially okay social yeah. media i compare that to that that same issue for instance right. if i go to your social media and you you don't know what like what is your mission are you an artist if you're an artist why is there just all of your why is there your favorite cats <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, what's going on? There's, and then there's memes. There's memes about every comedian, and then there's some fights that are going on. Then you got some politics in there, and I didn't even know. I forgot you were an artist. You know, you're just all over the place. That right. again, we re we got to revert back to structure. Right. If you go on my social media, let's take for example, mm. you're gonna know who I represent. And there's going to be a specific group of people. There's going to be a specific, uh, maybe even genre. Yeah. Or you know, or it's going to relate to music some of of some sort. You're not going to see me post about hot chocolate. About <laughs> you know what I'm saying about some hot dogs. You're yeah. just not going to see me randomly post because now the interest, the fans, and the followings that I have are going to be like. Okay, well, I'm not interested in this, and they're going to start falling off. But those yeah. who stay with me, they stay with me because they they love Curtis Young, they love right. Nico of Rick Ross Music Group, Christine Storm. You know what I'm saying? I just added on, faded. You know, there's so many different. You got to keep it structured. That's all I'm saying. If it's not structured and there is no sort of, uh, right. You feel me? You following me? <laughs> I, yeah. I really don't know how else to compare it. Just artists, especially, don't get it. Like, yeah, I, don't I know, know what you mean. I, I'm just thinking to play devil's advocate. It's interesting that there are obviously artists out there who use their political stances to mm -hmm. to benefit their careers. I mean, thinking That's about people worst. like I know, right? But it, it does work. I mean, I mean, taking the obvious example, you know, Kanye West. I mean, his his social pages are. You know they're just chaotic there's there's <laughs> so much disjointed fragmented stuff but it's built into this aura and enigma of kanye west and people love it and they buy into that without that would he really have the presence that he has I, i'm not sure if he would you know what what's funny about him he mm -hmm. is known for being chaotic for just right. being off the wall you just never know what he's gonna say right right yeah. So that's where they said, let's brand him this way. That's actually a strategy. Yeah. It's not like it just happened to fall into, oh, let's just make it where his page is all chaotic and crazy. Right. So when people, yeah, so they naturally they're going to flock to it and they're going to see what else did he say or what else is he doing? What you're going to expect chaos going to his page versus someone who's all motivational, inspirational. You're not going to expect I... to see that on their page. So political, political is chaos. Yeah, I mean, look at Trump, and look at <laughs> the Obama. Right. I mean, the um, the Michelle and mm. what's his name's wife. That situation. It's just there's a lot of conversation about it. So you would naturally throw that stuff on those pages, on those type of social media platforms or those brands. But there, right. believe it or not, that's a strategy. That's yeah. not oh he just happened to blow up and let's just keep it this you know. And no, that's no. It's that's all an plans. ongoing strategy. Right. Okay. Right, so that's the important thing to take from that is that, of course, you can strategize around politics and around chaos, if you like, as long as mm -hmm. there is a strategy and that strategy fits what the actual artist is like. So you're playing to their strengths and you're using right. that as an advantage to promote them, but it's all thought through and strategized. That's the important thing. Right. Right, absolutely. Because yeah. you don't want to be that artist who does not know what he or she is talking about and right. then they start, they, they, again, don't be that trend. Don't be that person who just wants to fit in. And then you start grabbing these politics, yeah. uh, these political type videos, and you're posting about it and you're talking about it and you don't know what you're talking about. Now yeah. I'm going to look at you like, not only do you, are you confused? Yeah. You know, not only are you chaotic, but you don't know what you're talking about, period. <laughs> so now you really lost me as a, as a follower, you know? Yeah, no yeah. fan at all here. Right. So, yeah. yeah, you see a lot of that with artists. They, yeah, you, especially those who try to be motivational. 
and they say stuff and after by the time you get to the bottom you're like what did i just read <laughs> you know don't do that <laughs> you're not motivational <laughs> no you exactly know, right what works for one doesn't work for everyone and also this gets back to the whole branding issue because you know all marketers know that it's all about positioning because like we were saying before, the mind can only hold so many brands, so many companies in someone's head. So mm -hmm. if you're chaotic, you're lost on someone because they don't think this artist equals this. You know, with Kanye, you think chaos, you think, what's he gonna say next? If you've got someone who you think is very sort of together and motivational, and as you said, they, they're putting stuff about their pets and other stuff, instantly mm -hmm. that's, that's something that's diluting their brand image. It's something yeah, that absolutely. they're inserting that is just going to make them confusing. And then and confusion always equals being ignored. And exactly. that's, that's the thing I'm always saying to artists is that if you want to be listened to, then you need to be coherent. Because otherwise, just like being at a dinner party, if you're ram rambling on, everyone's just going to ignore you. And branding is exactly <laughs> the same, same thing, exactly. right? It, because yes. even when you're... Even when you're chatting at a party, you're, it's still a branding exercise. You know, I'm Joe Scarf mm -hmm. at a party branding myself to people that I know, right. whether I'm networking, even when I'm talking to my family, they still have a perception of me and what I do and everything else. And you're always giving a, a sense of yourself, which is what branding is. So, yeah. Yes, um, it's important. I, which again, I, relates back to you, you better know what your social media is there for. You know, right. if you want to do pictures exactly. of hot dogs and all types of random stuff, then go to Instagram, <laughs> you know, take a bunch of right. food pictures. But food pictures are not for Facebook, <laughs> especially right. on an artist profile or a public figure. Like, what is this? Yeah, you, know, yeah. You, you need to know what goes with what and it needs to make <laughs> sense. So. <laughs> what, what, what advice do you give to your artists in terms of equipment? Because um, one of the big things I always go on about to twine artists is you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on, you know, this amazing guitar or amazing speakers. You just need to mm -hmm. have equipment that's good enough and then practice. So it mm -hmm. sounds like it's multi thousand dollar equipment. What, what message do you give to your artists on that subject? When it comes to equipment? Hmm. Yeah, in terms of... Never been, oh. never been asked that question before. Oh, I right. mean... Well, let me think about this. <laughs> I'm not a producer. I'm not an audio engineer. I'm not, you know, one who sits there and picks up a guitar. But mm. I do think that the deliverance is, a very, is very important. The quality of sound, right? Right. Uh, when an artist comes to me and they are obviously very talented, but when I listen to the song they're, and they're like, Tiffany, I'm ready for this to be distributed. And I listen to it and it sounds like it's in underwater <laughs> because that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem because now right. I'm comparing your quality to one of good quality or great quality. And you're going to stand out not for a good reason, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's you're going to stand out for other reasons. So, do you have to spend them millions, you know, thousands of dollars? No, I don't think you have to, but I think you need to focus on quality. Look at a video shoot, for example. Some people, the average number out here is about $2,500 for a video shoot. Yeah. That does not include the red cams, you know, that doesn't include the whole cinematic, you know, you just want a typical maybe one, two, three location video shoot and you got a decent camera. Videos where they spent five thousand to fifty thousand dollars versus someone who spent uh, fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred but they had a great editor right and made that video look like a fifty thousand dollar video wow okay in that situation you don't need to spend all that money right no so i think you need to focus on the importance of the quality if your quality of sound is not up to par or your quality of the visual or the brand is not up to par, then you need to spend a little bit more money. But you got to find that common ground. What's right. that dollar amount that you're that that's the typical? Don't go over the market, but then don't go under it either, unless you have that great editor, right? Or that teacher. Exactly. Right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. fund fundamentally, it's about the skills of the person using it, not the tool itself, pretty much. Right. 
because and okay. I say this all, all all the time to musicians that you know you can have a I don't know you know five thousand dollars set of speakers and you can have the most incredible you know Mac Pro setup with the latest Pro Tools and everything else but if you don't actually know how to make stuff sound musical and sensitive and mm -hmm. tight in a recording then you may as well be recording it through a can in your bedroom because you you, you don't right. know you don't know how to make the most of that stuff anyway and i think this comes back to the same with marketing right that i've seen people spend money on promoters who have no idea what they're doing and i've right. seen people pile pile money into these automated social things that follow people automatically and they can build mm -hmm. people you know a hundred thousand followers or whatever but actually people look at that and you know people aren't stupid they look at them and go okay you've got a hundred thousand followers but actually only a hundred mm -hmm. of those actually engage or read Engaging. any of your material <laughs> yeah so right. it, who cares it's just, that's just a vanity metric it's not an actual number that's gonna drive your career forwards. And I feel it's the same with, with equipment, that unless you've got the skills to drive your career forward, don't spend any more money, don't spend a single dime more on your equipment until you know how to make it sound like multi-thousand dollar stuff on what you've got, because you're not there yet. Absolutely, absolutely, which goes right it's... back to our first initial question. As an artist, right. you have this great product. But yeah, just going, wish... back to what, just going back to what we were saying, I mean, Mm -hmm. when when artists invest into their promotion it's important that they know what they're investing into and actually do the research on what skills they need to develop right and yeah i just wanted to um just ask you about i mean these days obviously there's more competition than ever on social media because people that has been around for longer people are used to having it they're more sophisticated with how they're they're using their accounts and so what have you noticed uh, has changed in the way pe people use social media and what can people do to you know um get people to engage with their content what what's the secret behind engaging content once you've got amazing material to actually put up in the first place once you have the content well that's number one most artists yeah. don't have the content they, right. they, have, uh, they have a link, they have a link to a video, they have a link to their iTunes, yeah. maybe even to like some streaming sites, but then what? So again, right. where's your visuals? Where's your plan? There's always something. There's billboards. Think of, let's go back to Coca-Cola. There's billboards, there's commercials, there's radio, there's ads, there's magazines, there's digital prints, there's, you know... Artists need to expand. They need to figure out what else is out there besides posting a flyer or posting <laughs> a link, you know? And that's yeah. why I think Facebook Live is so important, especially now when you look at technology, Facebook is pushing videos. So naturally, yeah. if you start utilizing their new technology, they're going to push you. Anything new that they say, hey, Facebook just added this new update, blah, 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 use it. Because they're trying to mm. make sure that they use, uh, that they push that, whatever it may be. Whether it's video, whether it's the new, uh, what is it, the GIFs? The GIFs for the, the Oh, yeah, get GIFs. Yeah. Right. You know, whatever it is, use it and have fun with it and learn all of the like don't get left behind and yeah. video is actually so engaging the thing about videos yeah. is if if you post a video especially the ones who uh, not the ones where you share but the ones where you actually upload or you go live that increases the engagement by some crazy number i forgot what the number was but thousands of percent because wow they force you to see it on the timeline. Have you ever scrolled through Facebook and you're like, oh no, I don't want them to think I'm seeing, I'm watching them live, right? So <laughs> you like try to scoot over it as quick as possible, like you're swiping as fast. Well, that's the yeah. thing. Right. Once they have some sort of view or once they have some sort of engagement, it counts and it goes into the analytics. And that increases the number of people that starts to see your posts, not just 
video in general, but also in your random, your just everyday posts, like a, a picture of or of a of a motivational word. Right. But you have to use that first in order to see the difference between not using it and using it. So yeah. artists are so accustomed to staying inside of their comfort zone. Well, I only post. I only post flyers. That's all I do. Okay, yeah. well, I, I'm bored now because I don't want to just see your flyers. <laughs> you know, yeah. do something different. Utilize some of these new technology, uh, technological advances and, and try to increase your engagement. Exactly. And there was something I found really surprising when talking to Cocaine, which was that he said he's still learning. He's still at social media school. And... Uh -huh. He was saying that, that for him, it, the important thing is to keep humble because as soon as you feel like I've got this, I've mastered my promotion, then he said there's going to be some new technology out there that you're not being <laughs> humbled by, that you're not taking advantage of. Is that something right. that you'd agree with? Yeah, that's true. That's very true. You constantly yeah. have to, the, the minute you're used to your iPhone or your Android, the next one comes out and, and people are looking at you like, oh, you still, you got that? Like the new <laughs> one came out last week, you know, and you don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be looked at as that dinosaur. Uh, 